More on that coming up. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Michael Bennett, member of the Intelligence Committee. Senator, I think I, I was just uh, going through the arguments that are made by all of the foreign policy people, uh, bipartisan foreign policy people. I mean, Lindsey Graham would tell you that. What do you do for Ukraine? We, we have to fund Ukraine. We cannot fail. It's not an option. The Ukrainian people have done more with their bravery over the last two years than anybody could have imagined. They took back half the territory that Putin took from them. They were able to, uh, without even a navy of their own, they were able to push Putin's navy out of the Black Sea, allow food to travel around the world. And they've, their fight has not been a fight just for Ukraine. It's literally been a fight for democracy. It's been a fight for NATO. It's been a fight for U.S.'s national security. They have they have they have been engaged in, I would say, the most successful proxy war in history. And for the United States to turn our back on them now would be catastrophic for our national security and catastrophic for people all over this planet that 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 hope to live in free societies. It just uh, strikes me that the switch from Mitch McConnell, I mean, from inside the Republican Senate, hard to fathom what could have happened in the last 24 hours other than Donald Trump exerting his pressure and a, a new Speaker of the House who yielded to that, uh, leading the way for the Senate to defer to the House is so unusual on a foreign policy issue of this, of this magnitude. Well, it's staggering. Um, I mean, I, I do believe that Mitch McConnell wants to fund Ukraine, but we'll see whether that's true or not. Uh, I think that anybody who looks at this and says, oh, this was just the Senate Republicans capitulating the House is missing the real point, which is what you're talking about, Andrea, which is this is Donald Trump exerting his thumb putting it on top of people that had negotiated a bipartisan deal that, as you pointed out, was a tough deal. I would say a deal that is needed because the border of the United States is overrun. We're seeing the effects of that in Denver. We're seeing the effects of that in Colorado. But the Republican Party, who are consumed in the House with impeaching Mayorkas without any evidence of any kind that of an impeachable offense, in my view, have now impeached themselves again on the issue of immigration. This is, it would be laughable if it weren't so catastrophic for our country. I was part of the Gang of Eight in 2013 that wrote the last immigration bill that passed the Senate with 68 votes. It was vetoed by the, Te the Freedom Caucus uh, on the floor of the House. John Boehner then said the worst mistake he ever made as Speaker of the House was not putting that bill on the floor for vote because the fortunes of this country would have changed. I don't think we would have ever had Donald Trump as our president if we had passed that bill in 2013. And here they are under the thumb of Donald Trump, who is expressly saying that he wants to stop this because it's good politics for him no matter how bad it is for the country. We're going to have to carry this message into November, and I think the American people are going to see, surprisingly, from their point of view, you know, based on what the Republicans have said, that the Democrats have actually stood for fixing our border, and the Republicans have been completely missing in action. Do you think the Republicans were negotiating in bad faith, or is this you know, not a flip-flop on policy, but more just raw politics. I think that, I mean, I, I, I don't think James Lankford uh, was negotiating in bad faith. I, I, I certainly don't believe that. I do think that um, the degree to which they are uh, in the back pocket of Donald Trump, they just have proven it again and again and again. I have no... There is, I feel nothing but discouraged by that. That doesn't fill me with any sense of joy or satisfaction because the American people need us to fix the border. The American people need a functional immigration system for our economy to work and for us to be able to compete effectively with Beijing and the rest of the world. The American people need us to lead the world at this critical moment for Western democracy and for Ukraine, and you have a party that is governed by somebody who doesn't care about any of that, who is willing to take his own defense into the U.S. Court of Appeals 
in the, on, a, on a theory of the case that any high school student would have thrown out because a high school student would know that the founders of this country believe that nobody is above the law, especially an ex-president of the United States. And now we've heard from them. So we got a lot of business to get done here. We have got, they'll, they'll have to decide. These Republicans are going to have to decide if they're going to abandon the work on immigration tomorrow. We're going to have a vote on this. And in the days that are coming ahead, the hours that are coming ahead, we better figure out how to fund Ukraine because there's going to be hell to pay in this world if we don't. And we should also point out that there was $14 billion for Israel. And John Kirby just held an on-the-record briefing with reporters from the NSC saying that uh, nine ambassadors from the Indo-Pacific region, from the Far East, have written to say how critical this is to deter China from whatever its uh, interests are in going after Taiwan. So this is a, a terrible signal to Vladimir Putin and to Xi Jinping that the U.S. does not have a Congress that can legislate foreign policy, it's, Senator? It's, it's stunning. I mean, first of all, you're right, both on, in terms of the money uh, for, for Taiwan's defense, but also because capitulating to Putin is exactly what Xi Jinping is hoping for. You know, Putin, there, there is news today, Andrea, that Putin has taken back a city in Ukraine. The Ukrainians, as I said, have fought brilliantly, and they will win, and they will continue to press their advantage if we fund them. But Zelensky Zelensky has told us if we don't fund them, they they will lose. And I am telling you, Putin does not know that he can win on the battlefield in Ukraine. He has no idea whether he'll be able to win because of what the Ukrainians have been able to do. The battlefield he's counting on winning on is the battlefield here, the dysfunction here. The idea that this nation or this nation's politicians is a better way of putting it, would be so divided that we could fall down on something as critical as, as, as this funding of Ukraine or frankly, securing the border of the United States. The Republicans are showing they're gonna walk away from this border deal. They better not walk away from Ukraine. Senator Bennett, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.